And in this presentation, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting some components into a computer, and specifically we're going to be putting in an extra hard disk, and we're going to be putting in some more RAM. So, let's get to the sub subject of hard disk first. Now, they come in a variety of formats, and uh, if we look at a few, what I've got here behind the camera, what I've got here is a Mac store hard disk. I'm going to point it on the desk, point the camera down, so that we can see it a bit more clearly. Not a very good cameraman, and I'm sorry about this, it may be very jerky. So, this works on USB. It's an external hard disk, and basically anybody can use it. It doesn't take any training, doesn't take any experience, don't have to open the computer up. Uh, plug it in, stick in a driver, and off you go. So, put that to one side for a moment, because we shall be using it in a moment. Something we shan't be using today, but it's worth looking at, are these things, and they're very clever. 16 gig on a very, very small thing, smaller than a box of matches, really. And the way they work is, if you take one out here, and you pop this thing, again, they're on USB, the USB-A connector there. Pull it back, keep it safe. Another example we've got here is an optical hard drive. And if we look inside the box, again you can see it's an external thing. And there's the hard drive itself. And if you look, you'll see that it works on a USB B port there and it has its own power supply there. The leads show that one is for data, USB-A to USB-B, and one is for power. It derives its power from the USB port as well, so you need two USB ports to work this thing. Now the reason for having this is that some modern laptops do not come these days with an optical drive. And if we need to get something off a disk and onto the laptop, there's no way to do it other than using this thing. So it's a handy little thing to have around, but again, we're not going to be using it today. What we are going to be using is what we're going to look at next. This thing. WD Western Digital Internal Hard Drive, 1 terabyte. It's quite a large disk. By today's standards, it's not that large. Four terabytes is not uncommon. But it's, uh, it's really a step up from what we had a few years ago. So, let's put it to one side for a moment, because we're not going to install it just yet. We've got things to do before we do that. When we're installing the disk, we're also going to be installing this. There are only two kinds of... Uh, of RAM that I will use, and one is Corsair, and the other one is Kingston. Now this is a 4 gigabyte stick, and it's really not worth putting more than 4 gigabytes into the machine we're going to look at, because it's only a 32-bit system. If we put more than 4 gigabytes in, it won't be able to use it. So, let's turn the camera around, and let's have a look at the machine. Again, I'm not a very good cameraman, and this is going to be a bit jerky. Sorry about this. Okay, so here's the machine. Let's bring it back a bit so we can see what's going on. And I'm going to call this machine Challenger. And there are a number of reasons for this. First of all, it gave me quite a few challenges when it first turned up. And secondly, in its general build construction, it does remind me a little of a tank. So, Let's have a look and see what it's doing. Turn the camera around again so we can see the screen. I'm not quite sure how clear this will be with the resolution of the camera I'm using. I'll zoom in a little bit. I don't think you'll be able to see the icons on the desktop very well. I'll point them out. Up here, we've got Microsoft Office, Word, Publisher, PowerPoint, Excel and Access. Here, 
we've got a calculator and here we've got a folder of my own called interfaces and it's where I put things I make so it might be made in Visual Basic or C or even Excel VBA here we've got my creative tools Inkscape, Real World Paint and Movie Maker and here we've got my virtual boxes Oracle VM here we've got a shortcut to Visual Basic uh, Mozilla Firefox and two more folders of my own, dump bin, which is where I keep everything I want to keep. It's usually PDFs to do with electronics or something to do with IT. And film, which is where I keep all the films I made and where this one will end up eventually. And then we've got the system ones, recycle bin, control panel and computer. And of course Kaspersky, which is my security uh, utility of choice. So... What we want to do first is we want to see what this computer has got in it. So, we're going for NSINFO32. Uh, NSINFO32. Hopefully, this should come up a bit more clearly. And which, looking at the screen here, it does. I'm going to zoom in a little, because what we want to look at is the installed physical memory, RAM. Now as you'll see there, there are currently 2 gigabytes of RAM in there, and we're going to put that 4 gigabyte stick in, so we'll effectively double the random access memory we've got, which is good. Let's come out a bit, because the next thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at the disk manager. Which is there. And in a moment it'll come up and tell me exactly what disk I've got here. Okay. So it's telling me I've got disk zero. Now disk zero here is the hard disk that's currently installed in my machine. And as you can see, the system reserve portion there and disk C. I've also got a CD-ROM drive. Now, what I'm going to do, if you remember this little Mac store disk, probably can't see it, let's get some light on the subject. If you remember this little Mac store hard disk, I'm going to plug it into the USB port and hopefully this manager should pick it up. Let's see what happens. There we are. And this manager has picked it up, and if I look here in computer, it won't appear. And the reason it won't appear is because it's not being formatted. That black line over the top there tells me that nothing has been allocated to this disk. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to format it. Now we're going to format it as a new simple volume, and up comes the wizard, and I'll just move the camera so we can see the wizard and what it's doing. There we are. If I click next, it tells me that I've got nearly a terabyte in there. Ask me what the minimum disk space is, and ask me what the simple volume size is, and I'm going to tell it one terabyte. It'll just uh, make one huge honking partition. I'm going to assign it the drive letter Z. OK, next. The file system comes up by default as NTFS. We can also have uh, XFAT. We don't want that. And the allocation unit size is the default. The volume label is going to be called Backup. Because what we're going to do is we're going to back up everything that's currently on the C disk and everything that's in the Windows system. So. Here we go, and then it tells me what I've chosen, I'll just check it to make sure, yeah that's fine, so finish, and now it'll start to format my external hard disk. It'll take a wee while, but eventually it will come up with something, 
There we go. It's called it Backup Z. And if I now go to Computer, it's found it. Shouldn't be anything on that. Nope, that's great. Okay. And there we are. Another two ways it's telling us it's found it. Cancel that because we formatted it. So, we're going to use this drive for backup using Windows Backup. So we can tell it to back up data files, my libraries and the local disk C and include a system image of drives. Oh, I can't quite see that problem. Let me turn the camera around. <coughs> okay, so we'll tell it next. And we'll go save settings and run backup ah there we go it says there's a backup in progress and hopefully in a few minutes this should back up to the Z drive all my Windows system. We can view the details and see what's going on. And now this will take a few minutes, and so what we'll do is we'll come back to it later. And I'll pause it at this point when it's 3% complete, and we'll come back when it's finished. So we're rejoining it as the backup gets to 100% complete. And there we go, Windows Backup is completed successfully, it's finished. So, we can close that, and if we have a look at Drive Z now, up a little bit so that we can see what we've got and there we are we've got a Windows image back up on there and a system image that we can refer to if we make a mess of the uh, installations we're about to do so we've done that what we're going to do next we're going to take the hard disk out, the external hard disk that is, safely remove hardware and eject media, eject M3 portable, there we go, it's safe to remove hardware, so out she comes. And we put that somewhere safe and secure, preferably in a fireproof box, down a big hole. And we're going to shut down the computer. And then we're going to start taking things to bits. Now then, we're going to need. Um, force shut down? Yes. We're going to need one of these things a field service anti static kit. So, let's move the camera a little bit. And we can see the toolkit we're also going to need. And in there you'll find all sorts of things. There's a multimeter, screwdrivers, tweezers, soldering iron, snips. You name it, it's in there. We're not going to need all of that. What we are going to need is a great big screwdriver. Because we're going to take the side panels off. So I'm going to point the camera at the uh, tank. And let's see what we can do. Now, 
it's shut down. So the very first thing we need to do is we need to switch it off at the mains. Having done that, we're going to go around the back and we're going to pull the mains plug out. So let's uh, do this. And there's the mains lead. Out she comes. And there are a number of other leads we're going to pull out as well. We want everything out of there, we don't want it to uh, to impede our progress in this matter. So, get the camera pointed to it. Let's go around the back and pull out some things. So we've got the VGA cable that comes out. We'll leave it connected to the monitor. And this is the network adapter. So we'll take that out and we'll put it somewhere over here where it's nice and safe and we know where it is. We've got the USB cables for the mouse and the keyboard. And that's it, our computer is now completely standalone and we can start taking the panels off. And what we need to do is we need to get this big screwdriver and we'll take the panels off like this. There are four screws in these panels, so here's number one. And I always find it's helpful if you're taking screws out to get a tub. Put the screws in there. So that when you come to get them back later, you'll know where they are. And there's number four. Okay, Let's spread our mat. This mat's got an earth point on it. There. Another one on the other side. And this is an earth bonding lead. And what I can do with this is I can click it onto the mat and once I've clicked it onto the mat I can put it somewhere where I know there is an earth bond and in this case it's going to be clicked on Well, to a radiator, which I know has got an earth bond, because I can see an earth wire running from it. I'll need to insulate myself as well. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to wear an earth strap. An anti-static strap. Whatever you like to call it. Before I can do that, I'm going to have to take the side panels off. And come off like this nice and smoothly from the side and again nice and smoothly from the side and we can see the inside of our computer so putting on my strap
like that. I'm going to click it to the back end of the computer. Having done that, I'm going to move the computer onto the anti-static mat. Let's shine a light on matters here and see what we've got. Do I need to move the camera around a little bit? Uh, I don't think I do. Let's just uh, zoom out a little. Okay, so. You can see here, if we look closely enough and find something non-conductive to point with, such as this, what we can see here is a RAM chip. And that's the 2GB RAM chip. And I am going to take that out. That's the easy job, although it is quite fiddly. To take it out, push up on the catch there, and I gently get the corner and the other corner Inserting minimal force, take out the ram, and the big thing here is to be careful to touch it only on the edges and not get my fingers on the actual circuit board. And put the old ram on the anti-static mat, and I'm going to grab the new ram. Now the new ram, same thing, DDR3 ram has a notch. We can see the notch there. On the slot, get a bit more light on the subject. On the slot, we'll see a key that matches the notch. And the trick is to put them in the right way round so that the key and the notch line up. This is where it gets fiddly. So, here we go, I'm going to move the loom a little bit, and put that in there like that, and that in there like that, so that they line up. Now we press on one corner until we hear it click, and then we press on the other corner until we hear it click, and if you're pressing with too much force, something is wrong and take it out and start again. That looks good. There we go, two nice little clicks. I like to go up and down it when I've done it and make sure that I can't see the pins. If I can see the pins, there's something wrong. can't see the pins on that one, so I'm going to assume everything's right. Now, we've done the ramp, so we're going to take the old ramp and we're going to put it back in there and we're going to keep it somewhere nice and safe. It's always good to have a spare stick of ram around in case something breaks. And then we're going to get to this. So let's unbox it and see what we get. Now, in here I get the drive itself, a bag of screws, I also get some paperwork. That's not important, it's basically a warranty and an installation guide, but we know how to install them. So, here's what we need to do first. 
going to move the camera so we can see this uh, this little metal piece here. If you look quite carefully, you may be able to see here that there is already a disc, and that's the disc we looked at before. That's my primary disc, disc C. We're going to put this new disc underneath it, but to do it, we need to find a SATA power connector, and it just so happens that there is a spare one here. How lucky is that? This computer has three SATA power connectors built into it. Another thing we're going to need is a signal cable or a data cable. Before we do any of that, we've got to install it. So what we need to do now then is we need to actually install the new hard disk and uh, it's going here. Now, we've got a bit of a problem with this machine because on some machines we have a nice pull out sled. The disk drops into the sled and you push the sled back in and it all fits in nice and uh, hunky-dory and you don't need to bother screwing anything you know, it all goes in on clips some machines have a rotating table and you pull it out like that and you fit the disc in from the front and push it back and just clip everything together this machine doesn't this machine has a couple of little clips on there that don't move so you've physically got to angle the drive as you're pushing it in, get it onto the cradle and then screw it in. It's a very fiddly job this one. And so we'll take the disc out of the bag. And being very careful here to turn it on its sides and the top and the plastic bits and not the delicate circuitry on the bottom. And two-handedly, we have to go in, move the loom slightly out of the way, line the disc up with the gantry, and gently apply pressure and push it in until we see screw holes. Now then, the screw holes I want are here and here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and pan and things until we can see those screw holes a bit more clearly. And I don't know if you can see them very well but there are two threads on there and basically we're going to take two of our screws and putting on some glasses so that I can actually see what I'm doing I'm going to screw that, one, no, screw that one in there so that I get a nice secure mount. And another important thing is not to screw them in too tightly. Even if you saw that one. If you can see this one. Now I'll move the camera a little bit so that we can actually see what we're doing here. That's better. So, in she goes. Nice angle. Let me move to a more convenient angle so that I can actually get straight onto that screw. There we are. And the important thing here is not to tighten them up. As the screwdriver meets resistance and you can't turn it anymore without applying severe pressure, that's the point to stop. There are two on the other side, and we shall need to turn the machine around so that we can get to them a little more. The 
and as you see it's even worse on this side oh, I don't know if you can let's pan back a bit because the two screw threads we want are actually here and here and that means I've got to get my hand in there very very trickily at a very tricky angle and apply that screw in straight like that and keep turning until the screwdriver can't turn anymore that's it this one's not quite so tricky, so let's get him in there. Oops. Not quite so tricky, but still pretty tricky. Just bring myself to a more convenient angle. There we are. Okay. So we've now got a nice secure mount for our new drive. Let's turn the machine back round again because what we've got to do now is connect up the cables. So bring the camera back so we can see what we're doing here. Shine it onto the drive itself, and we're going here, and we're going here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this SATA power cable, and we're going to put it onto the power connector for the hard disk. And once again, you don't want to be applying too much pressure. If you're applying too much pressure, there's something wrong and you need to start again. Um, I'll shine a light in there, make sure everything looks right. It does. Okay. And now we take our data cable and a bit more light. see what we're doing. Now we have to find where the SATA ports are and if we look on the motherboard here I have a SATA port here which is SATA 1. I have a SATA port here which is SATA 2 and they're already being used. SATA 1 is my primary hard drive. SATA 2 is my optical drive. Next door to that is SATA 3. So that's the one we're going to be using next. So the SATA cable. Now on a SATA cable you'll have an L-shape notch. And on there you'll have an L-shaped key. So you make sure the notch and the key are the same way round, like that. And you push the SATA cable in, like that, and we get a nice click, it's a good one. And the same for the connector, the L shape is going that way and down, so this needs to go that way and down, and again, if you are applying too much pressure, something is wrong and take it out and start again. Let's shine my light in. Now that connection looks good. So, take my light away. Now, I don't know where the academic stance is, but one thing we always do in technical is that we run it whenever we've put anything in or taken anything out or made any change whatsoever especially if it's an electrical one with the cover off for a few minutes 
and that way we can see if there's any pretty blue sparks, magic smoke, or otherwise things that shouldn't be there happening before we put the cover back on. So I'm going to uncouple myself from this thing. I'm going to move it back into its proper position like this. I'm going to, I'm going to get my keyboard in position and then I'm going to plug it back into the mains plug all the keyboard and mouse and everything else back in there and run it and see what happens right then so everything's plugged back in and we're running with the cover off let's switch on Well, we're looking good so far. It's past its post. And that's a good sign that the RAM is working. So we'll check things. Now, I haven't activated this copy of Windows yet, so that's a very minor concern at the moment. It will work. Let's zoom in on the screen a little bit. <coughs> so what we need to check is how much RAM we've got. Now you remember when we did this last time, we had two gigs of installed physical memory. Let's zoom in so we can see the installed physical memory. And that's saying four to me. So that's not too bad. We know the RAM chip is working. Now then, let's have a look at the disk and see if we can see that. I doubt that we'll be able to see it on the computer. Nope, we can't. And we know why. And all we need to go is the disk manager. Let's see if it'll find it there. And there it is. You must initialize a disk before Logical Disk Manager can access it. Disk 1. We're going to cancel that. I'll zoom in first so we can actually see what it shows. And basically what it's telling me is that the disk is not formatted. And I'm not surprised because it's the disk I've just put in. So let's format it. And how we do that is we go here and want it to be a new simple volume. That's better. Now we've got unallocated there, so we'll call it a new simple volume. Telling me it's one terabyte. 
I'm going to give it the drive letter Z. And we'll say we want it to be NTFS. And we'll leave it the default allocation unit size. OK. Now it's telling me what my choices are. And what that should do now, it should give it one big honking partition. Formatting. New volume Z. 931.51 gigabytes. Now, something interesting should happen here. New volume Z. Open folder to view file. Shouldn't be anything on there. There isn't. And there we are. New volume Z. And that means that the disk installation has been successful and the RAM installation has been successful. The job is done and we can sneak off and have a miss to players once we've closed the computer up. And in closing the computer up, we make a quick check. And the quick check is are there any blue sparks? Nope. Is there any magic smoke? Nope. And can we smell burning? Nope. Now what I could do with is taking this wiring loom and making it a bit tidier. But it's not going to get in the way of anything at the moment, so I'm going to leave that for another time when I've got a bit more time to do it. There's nothing exposed there, there's nothing going to cause a short circuit. So yeah, it's scruffy but I'm going to leave it there for a bit. Uh, get some cable ties and go around and tie everything up. And really, what we can say now is that the job is entirely done. So what have we done? We've doubled the RAM, we've put a new one terabyte hard disk in, and what we now have to do is put some more software on, and that's going to be the subject of the next video.